thank you so much for the insights. Yeah. Um, I think we'd uh, you know like to hear some questions from the audience. Uh, you know, you talked about automation, automation not being all bad, right? But um, you know, for companies that have a website and a mobile app, do both get attacked using automation? Is one usually attacked more? Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, you know, I think that generally speaking, what we see is before effective mitigation is in place. Um, we actually see the mobile app getting attacked more than the web. Um, and, you know, there's a number of reasons for that, but, um, but I would say, you know, typically after we go into mitigation, um, most of that kind of retooling the evolution of attackers, um, starts to transition over to web. And that's where we really see the long-term, um, uh, persistence for attackers that are going to keep trying. They tend to keep trying on web. Got it. So the like the initial attack factor being the mobile app, is that because of design or security or what, what just kind of speculating there? Um, you know, it, it's really changed over time. I think there there used to be a bit of a um uh, uh, a bit of a barrier um to uh, developers just not having the the same levels of um proficiency in terms of um you know exploiting mobile architectures and things like that. I think that's definitely changed over time. Now I think that um, you know some of the aspects of the um, the API interface that uh, attackers are able to um, hook into. Um, I, I think that that expertise is definitely there now, and that that really um, can be conducive to to scaling up. So they're not really attacking the application in of itself. They're 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 attacking the way that the application interfaces back with the mothership. Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Um, you, you talked a little bit about. Um, you know, credential stuffing and showing that some of those attacks still worked is my takeaway from that was was implementation, that there are still challenges in how something is implemented versus necessarily the countermeasures in place. Is that is that something that you're still seeing or am I look, thinking about that the right way? Um, can can you can you sure, expand on sure. that? Yeah, you know, it is you know, from countermeasures and security, and you spend a lot of bit of time there. Is 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 implementation of the particular tool or platform still an issue, or are you seeing less of that oh, yeah, from, of from an attack perspective? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I think um, you know implementation is is really um, you know everything in in some some respects, right? Um, how how that site is made available, um, uh, what kinds of information the attacker can glean about it. Um, you know, I've um, I've given some examples here um, that you can you know you can access in the in the full version um, that's posted online. But you know, um, just even the way that the um, that the site design is done itself, um, be, you know, behind the security um, can actually make a huge difference in how vulnerable it is to attack. You know, if I try to create an account, do you tell me if that uh, username already exists? Do you, if I try to reset my password, do you tell me that account doesn't exist? Little things like that can make a, actually a really big difference. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining us today. 